Hey everyone, so the new metahumans are awesome, of course, but while they're still in alpha, there are limited clothing options. So in this video, we're going to walk through how to isolate the metahuman head so you can use it with non-metahuman bodies, uh, whether they're Paragon characters that you got from the Unreal uh, Marketplace, or maybe a character that you made yourself and rigged yourself or bought online. You can then combine them with full performance Rococo motion capture for some truly AAA character results. Let's get into it. So here I have an Unreal project with one of the original preset metahumans loaded into the project. These are available on Quixel and you can bring them into your Unreal projects right now for free. I'll navigate to our metahumans face blueprint, which is located in metahuman common face and then I'll double click on the face anim BP. This will usually open up on the event graph, so we want to double click on the anim graph to bring it up. If we check out the head, you can see here that we have these shoulders that we need to get rid of somehow. In other 3D programs like Blender or Cinema 4D, we might be able to simply delete these shoulder polygons and leave the head. But in Unreal, we can't really do that. But we can kind of hack this blueprint to get the result we want, isolating that head. If we open up the face skeleton and then we select the pelvis, we can change the scale to 0.1 for all these fields. This will shrink the entire mesh down. However, if we then select the head, we can scale that back up to 10, which will return the head to its normal size. Now we have just the metahuman head. Now we need to create a pose asset that we can add to our blueprint. Go to create asset, pose asset, current pose, and I'll name this head underscore isolated, and then I'll save it to the main content folder. You'll notice that this pose's name is pose underscore zero. We'll need to remember that. We'll go back to our blueprint. And then we'll drag in the pose asset that we just saved. I'll right click on the asset once it's in and select convert to pose by name. And then I'll enter in the pose name, which was pose underscore zero. We'll then wire that node into the base pose of the layered blend per bone node. Now, if we hit compile, we can see this pose in effect. While we're here in this blueprint, we're also going to add a quick node to make our Rococo facial mocap look its best. This goes for any facial mocap you're using, using an iPhone and the AR kit. We will add a modify curve node in between this live link pose node and the AR kit mapping pose. If we right click here, we can add a curve pin. Specifically, we're looking for the mouth shrug lower pin. We're gonna make this 0.5 and when we hit compile, you can see here that the lower lip has been drawn up a bit. This helps fix an issue with the AR kit facial mocap where the lower lip and the mouth kind of hangs open. Okay, so our face blueprint is done. And if we were to drag this into our scene, you can see that we'd have the head, but we wouldn't have any of the hair or the grooms or the beard or any of that good stuff that we want. To get those, I'll open up the main blueprint for our character, which is located under content, metahumans, and then the name of our metahuman. Here I can select the body, and I can either clear the mesh field here, or I can just delete this body entirely. In this case, I'm just going to delete it, and I'm gonna do the same for the torso, the legs, and the feet.
You can see that my metahuman doesn't have hair here, and that's because the level of detail is currently set too low. To force the level of detail to the highest possible, I will click on LOD Sync, and then change the forced LOD to zero. This is the highest level of detail. Now if we hit compile, you can see that we have our hair. And if we drag this blueprint into our scene now, we have the isolated metahuman head with the hair and everything that we need. So while the shoulders are still technically there, you can see how you can now plop this head onto another character mesh and completely get away with it. Okay, so now let's take a look at pairing this with a non-metahuman body and getting our Rococo mocap up and running. So here I am in Maya in this case, and I have this rigged robot character. I'm going to select the head mesh and I'm just going to delete it. But you can do this sort of similar thing in Blender or Cinema 4D or whatever 3D program you might use. You just need to delete those head polygons of your character if there aren't discrete meshes for each body part. The point of all this is that you want to get rid of your character's head so you can use the metahuman head instead. You also want your character to be in a T pose if possible. Otherwise, you're going to have to repose the character in Unreal. In this case, our robot is in a T pose, so we're good to go. I will export this character as an FBX, and then I will import that into my Unreal project. When you're importing the character FBX, make sure to check use T0 as ref pose, and then we'll import all. Now we'll click on our robot skeleton, and we're going to go to create anim blueprint and then we're going to drag that anim blueprint into the scene i can zero out the position for our robot by clicking this little arrow here and then i can drag the metahuman head up into the head bone position if you need to change the scale of your metahuman you can do that right here i'm actually going to scale this metahuman up to 1.1 Now, all we need to do is parent this head to the head bone of our robot by dragging the metahuman onto the robot. And then selecting the head bone. Now, if we use mocap to drive the robot body, the head will follow along with the mocap. Okay, so how do we set up our mocap pipeline? Well, this is going to be the same way that we would set it up for any live streaming mocap to a character in Unreal. First thing we're going to do is make sure our Rococo plugin is enabled under Edit Plugins. If you search for Rococo, you can find it. Mine already is, but if it isn't, you'll need to enable it and then you'll be prompted to save and restart Unreal. After you've done that, you'll open up your character blueprint. I'm opening up this robot blueprint. And now we'll just create our standard Rococo live streaming blueprint. I'm going to start by creating a local to component node and then a Rococo body pose node. And I will wire that into the output pose and it will automatically add this component to local node for us. On the Rococo body pose node, I need to change this actor name to the same actor profile name that we use in Rococo Studio. In my case, it's just going to be my name, Sam. The other thing we need to add is a bone map override. We need to actually leave this blueprint to create that, so we'll just compile and save first. As you can see, we're going to get a bunch of errors here because we don't have that bone map override. To create it, we're going to open up the skeleton of our blueprint. Then I'm going to create the bone map asset itself by going back to the content browser and right clicking in it. Going to miscellaneous data asset and then searching for smart suit body map data. I'm going to name it Interceptor Boneless because that's the name of our robot. And I'll open it up. And now I need to fill in this table with our character's bones. So 
you can see here I'll just right click on the pelvis, I'll copy that, and then I'll paste that pelvis name into our hip field. I'm going to go through and do this for all of our bones. And when I'm done, generally you can see that I leave the fingertips in this bone map blank. We don't need to fill those in usually. Once I'm done with this bone list, I'm going to save it. And then if I jump back into our blueprint, we can now load in this bone list. Now if we hit compile, we're still going to get errors, but just because we left those fingertip fields blank. This character is now ready to receive live Rococo mocap. So here I have a recording that I made with the suit, the gloves, and our facial motion capture solution. For more info on getting this hardware set up, you can check our YouTube for more tutorials. I need to enable live streaming for Unreal, and so I'll go to start live stream and then I will toggle on the Unreal module. You can see here that I'm streaming to port 14045. I'm gonna exit this and then I will let our animation play on repeat in the background and I'll go back to Unreal and I'll add a Rococo receiver to our scene. I want to make sure this port number on our receiver matches the port number that we just saw in Rococo Studio, 14045 in this case. Here they match. Then I'm going to open up LiveLink by going to Window, LiveLink, and I'm going to add our Rococo Studio source. If you don't see your actor profile here, you might want to just make sure you have the right port numbers on your Rococo receiver. Okay, so now that Live Link is turned on, we can go to our MetaHuman and we will select our actor face under the Live Link face subject. And now if we hit play, boom, we have our MetaHuman head placed on and paired up with a non MetaHuman body, all running Rococo mocap live streaming into Unreal. So this is awesome, but how would I now record this mocap that's coming into Unreal so I can use it in Sequencer? So first I'll navigate to my take recorder and I'm going to add our robot body and also our metahuman head. I'll get my mocap recording in Rococo Studio at the right spot. And then I'm going to hit the record button in Unreal, and just when it starts recording, I'll hit play in Rococo Studio. I'll let this record. And then when the recording is finished in Rococo Studio, I'm going to hit stop in Unreal. Sometimes you'll get a pop-up here about sourcing chains. If you do, just hit no. I will stop my play session in Unreal, and I will create a new level sequence. I'll call it Robot Render. Now in Sequencer, I will add my robot. And you can see that both the robot and the head blueprint come in to Sequencer when you do that. I will delete the face control rig from the head, and then I'm going to add the animation track that we just recorded. Then I'm going to select that animation track in Sequencer and make sure this is on Use Animation Asset. And then again, I'm going to select that animation we recorded, and I'm going to keyframe this. I'm going to do the same thing for our body. I'm going to add the body animation. And then I'll also select that track and make sure it is on Use Animation Asset and key it. And now if we hit play, you can see that we have our recorded mocap playing back on our character in Sequencer. This method would work the same way with any T-posed character that you might have prepped in 3D software and brought in and then paired your metahuman head with, you know, that head bone so that you can just plop that head right onto your character. 
So hopefully you found this video helpful as just a starting point for starting to use the metahuman heads with uh, non-metahuman bodies. We've also just released a bunch of free project files where we actually set up metahuman heads with various paragon bodies, which are free uh, character assets that Epic released on their marketplace that you can download right now. And you can use these project files for anything you want because both the paragon characters are free and the metahumans are free. You can find download links for those project files in the description below. Also, please post any questions you had about this video in the comments below, and please stay tuned for tons more metahuman content coming soon, especially as they leave alpha and as Unreal 5 starts to make its way into the mainstream. Thanks so much, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.